When I talk about structural and systemic racism, it's a form of racism where a system opens its system to racism. A lot of racism in the Swedish system, but for me to make you understand more about systemic and structural racism, I'm going to recommend you, you should follow my Instagram account and my uh, Facebook page called My Autism Journey in Sweden. I'm going to be posting two pictures of two people. These are two people in the autism spectrum, right? These are two people. You have my autistic brother and then you have Greta Thunberg. This is where structural, systemic and institutional racism steps out. In the same country where two people are in the same spectrum in the have have the same disability one person is given the right to do whatever she wants to do they had disability they don't hold it they don't hold her accountable for and another person my brother he's been held accountable for his disability because when you punish hey guys welcome back to analysis with janet yeah we talk about everything we feel free to share your thoughts your opinion but always remember to be polite as you share your thoughts and your opinion about whatever thing that you're talking about so guys today's video is going to be about structural systemic uh, institutional racism here in sweden Yes, a lot of you guys know that Swedish in Sweden, stroke in Scandinavia, you don't hear a lot about racism. You think, oh, maybe there's little or no racism there because how many times do you put on the news and they say, oh, breaking news in Scandinavia, or a Swedish person did this or did that. But let me tell you something. That is why I'm making this video because the thing about structural, institutional, and systemic racism is that it's something that is being done by the government and that makes it difficult for it to be told. And like I said, before I get into this video, I just wanted to say this. The video... This video today is going to be a little bit personal for me because I'm going to be using my personal experience. I'm going to be using my family's experience to explain to you structural, systemic, and institutional racism. And I just want to say this. I might be using the word structural, systemic, institutional racism uh, often, but I might use them differently. And sometimes you might hear me talk about systemic. Sometimes you might hear me talk about structural. Sometimes you might hear me talk about institutional. All of them are the same. They mean the same form of racism. And I just want to say this we all know that in every white country there is racism yes it's not a doubt about it but there are also different forms of racism and so these different forms of racism come with different aspects and why i picked today to talk about structural institutional and systemic racism in sweden is because that's the most common type of racism in sweden and like i said i'm going to be sharing you videos and pictures of how structural and systemic racism works in sweden when i talk about structural and systemic racism what I'm trying to interpret or what I'm trying to tell you is that this is a form of racism where the Swedish government or where a system opens its system to races. Now, the government does little or nothing to pluck it out or address it or do anything about it. On the contrary, the races are instead getting more protection. The races are instead getting more power because they're going through the system. They're working with the system. They're in the system and the system doesn't get rid of them. On the contrary, the system promotes them. The system, and when I say promote them, it might be like, how does the system promote them? The system might promote them by ignoring them. That's promoting the racist. The fact that you see a racist and you don't talk about a racist, the fact that the system can employ a racist in the system and the system doesn't block out that racist, that's promoting that racist because it's just a matter of time before that racist find another victim or how many more victims with that racist abuse before that racist is being blocked out. And that's what is going on here in Sweden. There are a lot of racists in the Swedish system, but the thing is that because the system promotes them by ignoring them, and for me to make you understand more about systemic and structural racism, I'm going to recommend you, you should follow my Instagram account and my uh, Facebook page called My Autism Journey in Sweden. There I've been documenting a lot about my autistic brother here in Sweden. And the page, it talks a lot about, it shows you, the, it shows you a lot about Swedish racism. And like I said, the page has a lot of videos. It has more than like 100 videos and guys i've been doing i think i've had that page like for two years now and i've been documenting a lot about my autistic brother here in sweden and if you want to learn more or you want to understand more about structural systemic racism and racism in general in sweden you're welcome to go to the page because i'm not going to be bringing the videos here but i'm going to be taking one or two videos from the page and using it to analyze how structural and systemic racism works in sweden and how it's affecting a lot of black people because a lot of you guys think that some of us black people living in scandinavia and in sweden we don't talk about racism because there's no racism but let me tell you something when there's structural and systemic racism it's very difficult for people to talk because it's been done by the government and because the abuses are in the system and the government is ignoring them and the government is giving them enormous power it becomes very difficult because talking about it is like losing a lot of things the fact that you have to talk about racism can put in a lot of trouble for instance i for one personally i'm a criminal in sweden because i've been like i said i had this page my autism journey in sweden that i've been documenting my autistic brother for two years now and that page has gotten me in trouble recently the new shopping scotty in sweden told me i have to pay a fine because 
I am documenting how my autistic and intellectual disabled brother is being tortured here in Sweden. So you see why it's very difficult for a lot of black people in Sweden to talk about racism. Even I got locked up in Sweden. I got uh, bruises from the Swedish police here because I got attacked by Swedish police because I was documenting how my autistic and intellectual disabled brother has been abused in Sweden. So you see that. And it's all those information are on the page. So if you're very interested and you want to understand how structural and systemic and institutional racism is affecting black people here in Sweden, I would recommend you to go to that page because that page will teach you a lot of things. Before I start by explaining how structural and systemic racism is affecting a lot of black people here in Sweden. I want to talk about this. I'm going to be posting two pictures of two people. And if you're somebody that follows a lot about climate change, or you're interested in climate change, or you're somebody that's advocating a lot for climate change, you would know about the popular Swedish uh, girl called Greta Thunberg. She's very popular. Everybody knows her, right? Everybody knows Greta Thunberg if you're a climate change activist. And we all know that Greta Thunberg is in the autism, she's in the autism sp uh, spectrum. She has Asperger and autism. And like I said, when I started it, I talked about how I have an autistic brother that has autism and intellectual disability. So I'm going to post in the two of them, their pictures, and we're going to do a comparison. And from there, we're going to be, we're going to be able to understand more about structural and systemic racism, how structural and systemic and institutional racism is being done here in Sweden. So guys, so this is it, the picture. This is Greta on the other side. So let me start. The post I write, these are two people in the autism spectrum, right? But the two of them are treated differently. You have my autistic brother, which this is him. His name is Emmanuel. So sometimes in Miami, he's the call, talk about Emmanuel. When I say Emmanuel, I'm talking about my autistic and intellectual disabled brother. So this is Emmanuel, my autistic and intellectual disabled brother. He's been locked up, tortured for two years now as a criminal for having his compulsive behavior in the Swedish maximum psychiatric facilities, Kashiden. My family lastly saw him on the 25th of December, 2020. My family lastly spoke to him on the 6th of April, 2021. My family is not allowed to visit him. My family is not allowed to talk to him. And let me tell you something. This is my autistic brother, right? He's on the autism spectrum. Now, this is an autistic boy that is in the autism spectrum. He's been locked up. He's been called a criminal. He's not allowed to see his family. He's not allowed to talk to his family. And if you want to understand more about it, like I said, go and follow his page, My Autism Journey in Sweden. I've been uh, recording my conversations that we call every night to want to talk to him, and we are being denied not to talk to him. So let me talk about Greta Thunberg. This is Greta Thunberg, a Swedish girl, a Swedish uh, aut uh, autism girl, she's giving her she's giving her human right. She's not locked up. She she's allowed to be with her family. She's allowed to do the things that she likes doing. So guys, this is it. These are two people in the autism spectrum, right? These are two people. You have my autistic brother, and then you have Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg, she has Asperger and autism. She's doing what she likes to do. She's out there protesting for climate change, which I'm not against it. It's her dream. It's what she likes. Every autistic person, we all have some, they all have something that they like to do. That's her passion. That's what she has dedicated her life to. That's what she wants to do. She's allowed to talk to her family. She's not being called a criminal. She's not being locked up. She's not being denied not to get access to any visitor or any relative of hers. But my own autistic brother, on the other hand, he's, autism, he has, he's in the autism spectrum. He has his autism and intellectual disability that puts him in the autism spectrum. He's locked up. He's not allowed to talk to his family he's not allowed to see his family because and this is what we talk about this is where structural systemic and institutional racism steps out in the same country where two people are in the same spectrum in this have, have the same disability one person is given the right to do whatever she wants to do they had disability they don't hold it they don't hold her accountable for and another person my brother he's been held accountable for his disability because when you punish people that's holding them accountable for something so my autistic brother has been punished so he's been held accountable for his autism and intellectual disability in sweden and this is something that's been going on for almost two and a half years right now in sweden like i said the last time my family saw him was on the 25th of december 2020 the last time we spoke to him was on the 6th of april 2021 since then we have have barely seen him. we have barely spoken to him and we haven't seen him and why he's been punished and i want you to listen to this tape because i'm about to play a tape that my family will, will call every night to ask them that we want to talk to my brother and they always deny so i want you to listen to one of the tapes that my family called i think this tape was made on the 15th of december 2021 so i want you to listen to this tape how my family is going to call to want to talk to my autistic brother and you listen to what the guy is going to say on the line <laughs> Yeah, hey, can I please talk to my autistic and intellectual disabled son in the Swedish maximum psychiatric facility? Cause you that his name is Emmanuel Fu. No, it's not possible. Why is it not possible for me to talk to him? Because there's restriction. But restriction is another form of punishment. So why is my autistic and intellectual disabled son being punished for his disability? It's 
So you are you are an adult. So you, your boss, which is a medical doctor, has given you the authorization to punish my autistic and intellectual disabled son because restriction is another form of punishment. So can you explain to me why you are doing that? Because I thought we only punish people that understand mm -hmm. consequences of their action and people that have a choice. And a man with a disability is not a choiceable thing. People don't choose to be disabled. He did not choose his autism or his intellectual disability. So I'd like to know why he's been punished for something that he has no full control, no choice over the matter. Hello? Hello? So guys, today, the 15th of December, 2021, I called around 9 p.m. to want to talk to my autistic and intellectual disabled son. This guy picked up the phone. He said, my son is being restricted. And restriction is another form of punishment. And if you have been following my journey, which I've been documenting my son, you will know that I've been calling the whole of this year, documenting how I've been calling to want to talk to my autistic and intellectual disabled son. And he's been restricted and they're saying that he cannot talk to me. So guys, you've seen it. This is a tape. You heard it very well. My family call. That's my family calling. We call every night to want to ask that. Can we talk to my autistic brother? And we've been do documenting this for the whole the whole of 2021 that the ban us not to see him, not talk to him. So if you want to listen to more of these kinds of tape, you can go to his Facebook page or his Insta Instagram account called My Autism Journey in Sweden, where there are a lot of videos like this that my family has called to want to talk to my autistic and intellectual disabled brother and we have been told that it's restricted and restriction is another form of punishment and Greta Thunberg she has autism and Asperger but she's not punished for that no but my autistic brother is being held accountable for his disability so that means for the rest of his life he's going to be punished for his disability because autism and intellectual disability is something that people are born with we don't have a cure to it we just learn to live with them and understand them and try to help them because restriction is another form of punishment that means he's going to be punished for the rest of his life for his disability because he doesn't have the power to take away his disability he doesn't have the power to be like okay now i don't want to be autistic okay now i don't want to have intellectual disability he doesn't have that capacity he doesn't have that power and because he doesn't have that power swedish government is going to be punishing him for the rest of his life and swedish government is still going to go out there and support greta thunberg as greta thunberg today is in the spectrum that has an aspera swedish government supports her she goes out there to protest for climate change but when it comes to emmanuel he is going to be punished and that's what structural and systemic racism looks like in a system where two people are treated differently because these two people in question, Greta and Emmanuel, these are two people in the autism spectrum. The both of them did not choose their disability. They were born with their disability. But one person has been punished for his disability and is going to continuously get him punished for his disability because there's no way that my brother is going to take away his autism and intellectual disability. There's no way he's going to wake up one morning and announce to the Swedish people that, oh, right now I'm no longer autism and uh, I don't longer have my autism and intellectual disability. So can you guys liberate me? That's never going to happen. And then on the other hand, you have Greta Thunberg where the Swedish government has been very supportive of her dream where she gets the right to do to protest for climate change do the things that she likes doing but Emmanuel doesn't get that opportunity he gets punished and that's what structural and systemic and institutional racism looks like and this is something I'm gonna say this a lot of you guys will think oh there's no racism in Scandinavia there's no racism in Sweden because black people don't talk this is what happens where there is structural and systemic and institutional racism it's very difficult for people to talk because when they talk they will lose a lot like I said when I started this video I told you that I've been called a criminal in Sweden I've been labeled as a criminal and that's the thing about structural and systemic racism because it's been promoted by the government the government goes back after the victims and the families of the victims so the government doesn't go into stopping the perpetrator the government doesn't go into stopping the racist on the contrary the government goes into stopping but the victim and the loved ones of the victim trying to get the victim justice and that's why i say if you really want to understand so much about structural and systemic racism in sweden i recommend that you should go to his page and follow his page because there are a lot of interesting videos and a lot of interesting things there that is going to help you to understand how structural and systemic racism has kept a lot of black people quiet in sweden because a lot of times you black you people out there think that oh it's Scandinavia is one of the best places for black people to live. Sweden is one of the best places for black people to live because there's nothing, you don't hear every time breaking news that black person got attack but the truth is that it's going on but the reason why you don't hear about it is because it's been sponsored by the government so the government makes sure that it's not out there like i said my family is asked to pay a fine in sweden because we choose to document my brother which has brought a lot of scandal to sweden because these tapes out there people are saving them people are watching them and it's destroying the review of sweden so instead of the swedish government going and taking responsibility and doing the right thing they decided to instead ask my family to pay a fine for documenting how an abusive facilities how my brother my autistic and intellectual disabled brother has been abused in sweden 
Sweden. And this is why a lot of Africans, a lot of black people here in Sweden are very scared to talk about racism or talk about their experience with racism. Because when you start trying to document your experience with racism or start trying to narrate your story, how you have been racial upon in Sweden, on the contrary, you're being asked better to pay fine. You're being sued. I've, I've put a lawsuit that my family got here in Sweden. I've put it on, on, on his page, my autism journey in Sweden. You can go there, you read the lawsuit. I put the judgment there where my family's asked to pay fine. I put all of those things on his Facebook page, on his Instagram account, my autism journey in Sweden. All of those things are there. And it's a very clear example to show you why it's very difficult for a lot of black people, a lot of immigrants in Sweden to talk about racism. Because racism, it's something that happens behind closed doors. It happens inside the system. And then they just close the case and make it look like, oh, it never happened in the first place. Nothing happened or nothing has ever happened. And that's why I say this, that when you don't hear people talk about racism, black women talk about racism in Sweden, you know, in Scandinavia, I don't think that's because we all have it all mapped out together. It's because it's very difficult. Structural and systemic and institutional racism is very difficult to break through it. It's very difficult to expose them because the races are getting really empowered from the system. The races got a lot of empowerment from the system. So most times the victims don't get that so much empowerment. The victims have to fight all by themselves. And it can be very hectic to fight a system all by yourself. It is not that easy. I know that because my family is fighting the Swedish system all by ourselves. There's no journalists, there's no organization, there's no Nobody in Sweden helping my family. We're doing all the job all by ourselves. So how many families can put up doing all this all by themselves? How many? Most times a lot of families cannot do it. So they just succumb to the racism by just accepting that's how life is supposed to be for them because they don't know where to turn to and to even make matters worse is that Sweden has a very good reputation out there so it becomes very difficult for you to break out there and show the whole world that Swedes are racist because people think oh Scandinavians are very shy people they're very introverted people they keep to themselves they don't know how to hurt a fly that's what we all think but what we really don't know is what Scandinavians do behind closed doors what we really don't know is what Swedish people do behind closed doors what we really don't know is what happens behind the Swedish system what we really don't know is what happens behind closed doors and that's why a lot of time people feel discouraged telling their stories about being racially in Sweden because they are feeling like I've met people that have said to me, Janet, even if I go out there and tell somebody that I've been racial upon you in Sweden, who's gonna believe me? Everybody loves Scandinavians, everybody look up to Scandinavians, everybody thinks Scandinavians have the best system in the world, everybody thinks the Scandinavians are some angels sent from heaven, everybody thinks the Scandinavians are there's no racism in Scandinavia. So how am I going to explain to people that I got racial in Sweden? How am I gonna tell people that I've been racial I've been racial upon in Sweden? Nobody's gonna believe me. And I and I don't blame them. It's very difficult to break through and tell people that I have been racial upon. I've traveled a lot and when I tell people that there's racism in Sweden, they look at me and they're like racism until when I start playing the videos of my autistic brother and then they look at me and they're like oh my god can Swedish people really keep people like that in their system I'm like welcome to the reality of Sweden Welcome to the reality of Sweden, where races are empowered. The truth is that there's a lot of racism here in Sweden. There's a lot of racism here in Scandinavia. There's a lot of racism going on in Sweden. And you might not even know about it because it's done in the side of the system. Like I said, it's systemic and structural and institutional racism. So you have to get into the system. You have to meet somebody that has been abused, like my family, to understand it. One of the reasons how I am I'm able to manage to show people racism in Sweden is that I have to always play a tape of my brother. I have to always play a tape of how my brother has been abused in Sweden. That's when people start trying to get a picture of what I'm trying to they're like oh my god now janet i'm getting a picture of what you're trying to say so truly swedish people are racist i'm like yeah truly swedes are racist and they're not only racist but their government also helps protect them so they don't get caught out there and they're not being exposed out there so guys that is it today for structural systemic and institutional racism here in sweden and thank you all for watching and thank you all for listening and remember this don't forget to subscribe to my channel don't forget to like don't forget to share your comment and if you're going to share your comments please be polite and be respectful you're allowed to share your thoughts you're allowed to share your comments but just remember that try to write in a polite way and try to write in a respectful way so yes guys like i said thank you all for watching thank you all for listening and i hope to see you guys again in my next video bye guys